Hey now, brawlers, it's time for another Board Game Brawl review with Nick Meanahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at Civilizations from Grana. This is a spiritual successor to CV, which I will also be reviewing at the same time as this. And there are a lot of uh, similar elements between the games. They feature the same artwork for the most part. We'll talk about that in my final thoughts. And they both are about drafting cards, sort of, and using those cards to build a life. But in this case, the life is the life of an empire, a civilization, if you will. In any case, <laughs> there, what's also very different, though, is the fact that in the uh, in CV, it's a dice-chucking, Yahtzee-style, King of Tokyo-style uh, dice-rolling game where you're using the symbols that you gain in order to buy cards. This time, the cards that you buy from a very similar track, instead you're using resources and Euro game-style elements. This is almost like the Euro version of CV. And also, rather than rolling dice to get those resources, you are playing cards through very deterministic uh, action selection. Let me go ahead and give you a brief look at how the game is played, since none of that probably made any sense to you. Then we're going to come back. I'll let you know what I think. Civilizations is about building civilizations, which is how you say the word when you haven't just had a stroke. The goal is to have the most happiness points at the end of the game, which occurs at the end of three ages of play at three rounds per age. Add up all the happy faces on your ideas, as well as the happy face tokens they had laying around from CV, and whoever has the most is the winner. I will also note that the game plays completely differently with two players as opposed to three through five, as you will either have a dummy player or each player plays with two hands of cards. This sounds dumb, so I didn't do it. That's why they pay me the big bucks, folks. In-depth analysis. Every player gets a set of eight of the same order cards and one each of the resources, wood, food, and stone. Whoever last held their tool gets the starting player helm. Oh, excuse me. Whoever last held any kind of tool. So it could be someone else's. Put the rest of the resources in their spots on the board. A crown token starts at age 1 and will progress at the end of each age. There are two decks of idea cards. One you'll draw from for ages 1 and 2, and another you'll use for age 3 exclusively. Fill up the track with age 1 and 2 cards. So let's talk about ideas. You know, this country is an oligarchy, in need of serious social reform, and socialism really isn't so bad it, uh oh sorry, not those kinds of ideas. The idea cards are broken down into four types and colors. Blue buildings, orange tools, yellow inventions, and green ideology. They represent different stages of advancement. Kinda? Each one has three parts, a cost to buy it in resources, so when it's time to buy a card, you'll simply return those resources to the stock and take the card, a special ability, and a happiness point value for the end of the game. The special abilities will give you extra resources, enhance your order cards, or give you bonus points at the end of the game. You'll need to purchase these cards in order to win the game. Every age of play is broken down into three rounds, and every round has the same four phases. Phase 1 is the giving of orders. Starting with the player with the tool holding helm, you'll choose two of your order cards from your hand of eight and place one of them face up and one of them face down in front of you. Once every player has done this in clockwise order, all of the face down cards are revealed and you resolve them in the appropriately titled... Phase 2, the action phase. Starting with the lowest numbered order, players resolve their played cards. If more than one player chose the same order, you resolve in clockwise order. Every order works on the premise that the payoff will be different depending on how many people chose the same card to play in the same round. Typically, being the only one to play in order has less benefit, except for trading. But if one other person has, you'll do much better. But if three or more play the same order, it's much worse and you possibly get nothing. The orders and what they do are 1. Thieving. You steal resources from other players. 2. Logging. You gain wood. 3. Hunting. You gain food. 4. Quarrying. You gain stone. 5. Cunning. You gain resources of your choice. 6. Slacking. You gain happiness points. 
7. Trading. You convert resources to other resources. 8. Doubling. Not in order in itself, this will simply double the effect of your other played card for the round. You do not immediately get cards back. You will play 6 cards every age. When you have 2 remaining, that's a signifier that it's the end of the age. Phase 3. Again, in clockwise order from the tool holder, each player gets to buy one and only one idea card optionally. Cards are replaced immediately upon purchase in the track and you'll gain the special effect of a card starting on the next round. Again, if you have the right resources, return them to the stock in order to purchase the card. These cards are placed in front of you. Finally, phase four is cleanup. The tool hat passes and you start a new round. If it's the end of an age, everyone takes their cards back. If it's the end of the second age, wipe out any remaining cards on the track and start using the third age cards. That's it. You keep buying cards and keep buying happiness, just like in real life. Also like in real life, ignore the yawning emptiness of your soul that you're trying to fill with purchased empires. Now, my final thoughts. Well, as I mentioned in my intro, civilization shares a lot of elements with CV. Uh, but one of the important elements that it doesn't share with it is fun. I really did not like civilizations. And yes, I understand that it's it would be natural for me to like it because it's taking those elements. And I've heard some people say that this is the refined and improved version of CV. I could not disagree more. All things considered, and I mean, there the game works. It's very easy to understand. It's very quick to play. The cardinal sin of civilizations, I just hate saying that, is that it is just boring. That, to me, is the worst thing a game can be. I would rather a game be completely and utterly imbalanced and still at least be fun. That wouldn't make it a good game, don't get me wrong, but boring is the worst thing to be, and during the course of Civilizations, I was just like, is this gonna end anytime soon? Please let it end. And it's not a long game, but it was almost like uh, 10 minutes of fun crammed into Four hours of gameplay that was only actually one hour. It just felt like four hours, if any of that made any sense. And again, the the idea is fine, right? It's the same kind of card drafting mechanism, sort of, where you're uh, taking cards from a track and using your resources to get them. Before the other players do, they get you special abilities, they get you points, yada, yada, yada. So that's the same as CV. But in this one, you have the random, or not random, but the uh, deterministic... Uh, order selection. It's an interesting mechanism. I've seen it used pretty well in other games. It's not my favorite thing, but okay. The problem here is as interesting as the idea of um, having a, a specific effect based on the number of players you choose an action is, it almost feels as random as what happens in CV. Yes, rolling dice and chucking them three times is, a, is very, very random, but in this one, it's you can look at what other players are doing doing and what they have and what the resources they have are and what cards are out on the board but it's still really hard to determine what they're going to do if anything and I've seen entire rounds get shot because several people choose thieving all at once and nobody gets to do anything and the okay that's the point of it I understand but this is a despite being a very simple game very straightforward almost as simple as CV this one is much more critical that you do not screw up if you fall behind in any way, if you have a couple of turns where you don't buy a card, you are probably going to lose. And that can be very frustrating in a game that, again, is supposed to be very simple, very straightforward, and it still feels almost as random as the original CV. But again, the big problem is that you're doing all these things that seem interesting on paper, but nothing seems to make any huge splash or any difference. Nothing is all that exciting. I log, and I take a wood and then I use that wood to buy this card and a lot of the cards don't even do anything especially in the third age some of the cards have an effect but it's just like oh if I log I get one more wood that's it and one problem I'll say too before I forget is that the artwork you know the artwork sort of covered over some of the warts of the original game CV because it was so good. This is the same artist, but it looks much lower quality, especially on the order cards, because it's not done in like a digital style and it just looks really rough. And on the idea cards, it's so small and sort of overtaken by the rest of the, the box of the card that 
it doesn't even feel that pronounced. So the game doesn't even look as good. It actually feels like this should have been the first game, and then they improved the art style several years later with CV. So it's really weird. I don't know why it turned out like that. I guess the the pieces for the resources are fine, and the board looks okay, but nothing just kind of lives up to what uh, I expected this game to be. I would be perfectly happy with a very light Euro game that moved quickly, and it, this does for the most part, but it just feels so drawn out. There's, you know, it's just like, I play my cards down. Okay, now you guys do. Flip. One. Anybody got one? Two. Over and over and over again. After nine times of doing that, which is the course of the game... It took a lot of willpower for me to even play this again, which is why it's been sitting in my review stack for weeks. And I finally did like, okay, let me come to it with a fresh set of eyes, full of vim and vigor, and uh, it's the same as it was before. And on top of all that, I'm not really sure about the balance of the game. There are some idea cards which are far and away better than all of the others. Cards that consistently give you resources every round whenever you log or whenever you quarry or or every age when you're able to do it. Or just things that are generally useful or even just cards that are worth a lot of points. Compare that to cards that are very selectively useful. If you activate logging when you have three or more players who have done it, you get one extra thing. And it's just, it's so... And again, because... It's, this is where it's more random than you might think because if it just happens, just so happens to be in the lineup that there's one of these awesome cards and someone gets to it first or you don't happen to have the resources right then at that moment, you're stuck. So it just feels very unbalanced in that regard. So I really cannot recommend this game. CV, I like a lot and would hesitantly recommend it just because I don't think it's for everybody. But even with Civilizations and the idea that it's a light Euro game and it's a gateway game and people could go to it for that reason, I still think you have better options for light, um, deterministic, resource-gathering games. Don't ask me to spout 10 of them off. You can look on Board Game Geek, but this feels like it's been done before and done better, including some elements from its sister game. So check that one out instead. That is Civilizations from Grana Pass for me. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.